Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, so Godfrey and Godwin will not be able to do their talk. Uh, their visas got rejected. So Neil Miller is, does stuff in Python, and he's going to be giving a talk. <laughs> he asked me to for that to be his introduction. I'm not. I'm not just lazy. <laughs> So this was a talk I submitted as an emergency talk, but my plan was to have tonight to prepare it so it could be used tomorrow. <laughs> this is going to be rather more off the cuff than I actually intended. Hopefully it will work out. Hello? Ah, that sounds better. Okay. Uh, talks. Okay, so what is Pygame Zero? Um, you'll also note the distinct lack of slides because that was going to happen tonight. Uh, so I don't know, how many of you encountered Pygame? All right, okay, so Pygame is a library for writing games in Python, it's kind of cute. Um, if you want to write games in Pygame, I should recommend the event PyWeek, which happens twice a year. You write a game in Python in a week. The next PyWeek starts on the 21st of October, and they are great fun, and it's a great way to learn Python, and really, more people from South Africa should take part. Um, I mean, the Cape, people from Cape Town have taken part uh, basically about once a year since 2010 or so. But as far as I know, there's only ever been one entry in Pi Week from Joburg, which reflects very badly on all of you. <laughs> so, okay, so. Right, so this is a, a blank window in Pygame which quits in, um, in quits if you press um, Control Q. It's a sort of minimal framework to start doing a game from. What does the code look like? Actually, I should make this larger. So we import Pygame, we import Pygame locals, we initialize the display, we set the mode, we add a, a handy constant. Uh, we start a, a timer because we need to that. And while we're running, we sit down and we wait for an event. And if we get the control, the Q key with the control modifier pressed, we exit. And yes, you can kind of tweak that code a bit, but that really is about as minimal as you can get it. That's still quite a lot of boilerplate. And if you're wanting, especially if you're wanting to teach coding, and let's face it, teaching kids to program games is, tends to work quite well because everyone likes to you know, throw graphics on the screen, that amount of boilerplate before they can start doing anything really isn't great. So the idea of the library Pygame Zero, which is developed by a bloke called Daniel Pope, who's a really nice person and very helpful if you ever run into my IOC or any other comedian channel, is to remove all that boilerplate. That is an empty file. That is a legitimate Pygame Zero program, which displays an empty window, which quits if you press Control Q. That is the entire point about Pygame Zero. All that boilerplate we don't care about, 
because it's boilerplate. We don't want people doing that. Um, so now, you'll notice I don't actually have an example, so I'll just grab some from the Pygame Zero distribution because <laughs> this is what <laughs> this is uh, basic. Actually, I'm going to copy that. Um, actually, I want something simpler than that. Um, Actually, I do need a couple of things from demo one. So an actor is something which, I'll go back to the code. An actor is an object in your game, a player object, something and such. Um, the name will be the image it uses. It's Pygame Zero requires a specific structure that you have images and you have the file names there. To aid portability, it will complain if you do things that aren't, if you use names that aren't lowercase and warn that, so you, one of the problems people often do when they're moving between Windows systems and other sy and systems with case systems file sy um, case sensitive file systems is they get into run pro lots of problems about no, why does my image no longer load and such. So Pygame Zero avoids that by demanding that everything always be lowercase, um, which is a useful convention um, such we have a bunch of attributes. And then the update function is a hook that gets called every tick and DT is the time interval between that. So in this case, I'm just redrawing it every um, frame, but I can do something like Okay, I'm not clearing the screen you get the idea. That every frame I'm updating the angle of, of that little sprite and is redrawing that. So, um, yeah, so that, that is the, the point about Pygame Zero is to get everything as simple as possible. It has support for sound and various other, um, has support for sound, which I will not demonstrate because um, I don't have that hooked up on my laptop. And uh, anyway, the sound quality on my laptop isn't great. Um, but also very simple. You can have as many actors as you want in a scene. Um, you just create a new object for each one. And then the other thing is, um, I think in this case we can go to, right, yes, so. Right, so that's just doing that, uh, maybe three. Um, oh, PG zero. This is a mistake I always make when switching between Pygame zero. And zero. So we have basically the classic um, Punch a Monkey game. Um, and it's the same sort of thing that we have our alien actor, 
we give a, now we get fancy. We give the screen a title, which is just set a title. We also specify a width and a height, which also just setting those properties. Initial position, all right, we have a bunch of different things you can use to position things. Pause defaults to the center, but you have top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, because depending on what you're doing, it can be convenient to position things relative to the bounding rectangle. In this case, because it's not written, by, it's written by somebody who remembers these things, i.e. not me, this, it does a screen clear and then draws the alien. And on the update, it just moves, and if it runs off the edge of the screen, it resets its position. And then to handle the mouse position, we just say on mouse down. We get the position on the mouse. Collide point is again a helpful function provides, it just is there. This is also something that Pygame provides, but it's a little more convoluted under Pygame. It's very simple under Pygame Zero. And then on aliens, changing the, the image for the alien is just assigning the image attribute. In this case, it would play a sound if I'd had sound enabled. And then it schedules something where it will reset the alien. And again, every line Every line in this program does something immediate, other than the document and the comments, does something that's immediately relevant to the game, which is, A, it's very great for teaching, but also it's great for writing the game. If you, um, you never have to worry about, you know, when you're dealing with Pi Games Zero, you, you write up a bunch of boilerplate code to do things, and you never have to worry about, you know, I can't see why this is, you know, I can't remember why I added this. Is this still important? You know, was this solving a problem or is it relative to the game? Everything I'm doing is related to the game and, yeah, is, is valuable. Um, and from there, I don't think this, so what do I need? Uh, The other thing that Pygame Zero has, it has really good documentation and they update it, um, which is not always true. Of, um, Pygame has gotten better about updating its documentation, but there was for a while when it was... Um, well, let's say Pygame's gotten better about updating the documentation, but there was a while when the Pygame documentation had gotten a bit out of sync with Pygame releases, which made doing stuff uh, very early on. And so you have you know, good documentation, you have the your two hooks or major hooks you want to be worried about are draw, which allows you to change how you draw stuff on the screen, and update, which you call every time you um, want to update stuff. Your vent handling hooks are on mouse down, um, on keyboard down. We can also have the up variations, um, mouse movement. And then there's also something if you want to do music track, which is sort of background sound rather than a, a sort of sound event, you can have something to do that when the music track ends, so you can start another track or loop the sound or so on. Um, right. Both. Then the other very important thing to um, feature that Pygame Zero has is animations that um, you can do the, the update trick which I did where you just change the position and redraw it, but a lot of the times you want to have a smoother flow. You want to do a you know, sort of something where the object speeds up and then slows down, or you want to have, you know, it's you know, an acceleration effect, or um, you want to have it bounce at one end, and the various things like that. Um, and Pygame has this idea of animations. So here we have something where we create two actors, a block and a ship. And the move block now uses this animate function which says, the block, I want it to move to that position, I want to animate that movement over a duration of one second, 
and I want it to bounce at the end. And the ship does a rotated um, animation, which is over 0.3 of a second. I want to rotate, I want the angle to change to the next angle. And that will do as a nice smooth animation. And that, ah, PG there. And you'll see the, the bouncing block effect, which again requires no real effort on your part and kind of cool. And you, know, and you can utilize this effect you know, very easily to create nice you know, whatever animated effect you want. Um, there are a bunch of options on that. You can control the duration. Yeah. So that is. Yeah, so what else are we going to do? Oh, yes. um, oh, con very useful convenience methods if you're wanting to play right games are the distance to and angle to, which are just give you those values. Um, and oh, clock we've mentioned, but. Um, that you allowed to schedule schedule events. The schedule, which is a repeating event, will be called multiple times. Unique will only be called once. Um, that, and you can delete things from the schedule. It um, gives you the sort of standard timing functionality. And, there. and from there, you can, as I said, it's very um, you also ha you do still have access to most of the Pi game methods, um, just nicely wrapped, so you can you know use draw to draw shapes on the screen, um, so, and you can do various complicated effects. And it is still all Python code, so you have all the the useful structures of loops and all the rest of it. So. That, that, that just loops through and draws a whole bunch of different boxes, and yeah. That's what I think. What else? Hmm. Oh. That's, that's, that was, yeah. And yes, so. And then from there, you can get up to building fairly complicated games um, fairly quickly. Is that this is a sort of a standard sort of um, flappy, board ge flappy bird game where you're trying to you know, move the bird um, through that. So you create the bird with initial position, and then you atta attach some additional properties you want to it. All right, we have. Um, we have pipes which will move um, and will appear with a random gap. We add a little velocity effect um, on our Y position and we check if we collide. Um, collide rect is another pi game helper function which is uh, exposed to you. Um, and if you press press a key, you will um, move the bird up. Otherwise, you will nothing. And then we just redraw it. And then the go is just um, a convenience function. That and that gives you the sort of game in 85 lines with comments and everything there. OK, so I have not taken, uh, so I've now taken 20 minutes. Um, I had it tended to go a bit slower and a bit more cautiously, but I think I've run out of obvious and interesting things to show you. But uh, what I want to emphasize is that, well, A, it's, it's a great teaching tool, but also it's a, it's a really useful thing if you want to get started with Pygame and 
write games, um, and I encourage people to do that. They are fun to work on, they are fun projects, and I encourage people to you know, take part in Pi Week, because it's fun, and people should. Okay, questions? <laughs> I promised you a difficult question, right. but this might not be that difficult. I just want to know, is there any support for doing things in three dimensions, or, or all the Pygame stuff? Okay, um, so in Pygame and Pygame Zero, there's no three support. Um, Pygame, because it's based on SDL1, which is purely 2D, and Pygame Zero is a wrapper around Pygame. Um, if you're doing raw Pygame, you can basically create a surface which you can then you pass to OpenGL, PyOpenGL, and use PyOpenGL to do that, and still have the Pygame event loop for you. Um, it's not really exposed. Um, that sort of functionality isn't exposed in Pygame 0 because it's sort of um, not... Uh, Pygame 0 is primar primarily meant to... Um, a low impedance way thing to get people into working with Pygame and, and programming. And 3D is not easy in whatever framework you're using. Um, if you're wanting to do 3D in Python, if you're wanting to just play around with the OpenGL, with raw OpenGL, it's probably better to use Piglet, which is much more designed around being OpenGL framework friendly. If you want a more f a friendlier interface, then you probably off looking at one of the existing 3D libraries. The ones with good Python support are Panda 3D, which is quite cool. Um, and that is also, that's a complete game engine. So it also provides all the user interface, all the user input um, sound and all the rest of it, but gives you um, a lot of tools for dealing with 3D and loading 3D models and, and such. The other one which works quite well with Python is Ogre. But that is purely a 3D rendering engine. You still need to use something else to manage keyboard input and all the rest of it. Um, there are a couple of other ones. There's Horde 3D, although that one's... It died for a few years, but has now come alive again. But the Python support hasn't been updated, so yes, you can get it to work, but it's a bit flaky. Um, and then there's Godot, which is much more a specialized game thing. And that has Python support, which was going to be merged, but last I looked hadn't been merged, but um, I'm a bit out of date on that. So, no, there are those sort of options. I'd say Panda 3D, though, is probably the best one if you're going to be doing it in Python. It's the most complete, and um, Python is a very heavily emphasized part of it. <laughs> Uh, any questions? <laughs> any more questions? Uh, I want to know if, hi, <laughs> <laughs> if there are any organizations specifically in South Africa or Africa that actually use um, Pygame Zero to I teach. I don't kids. know of anyone in South Africa. Um, there's um, Daniel Pope, the person who wrote it, who wrote this, um, was funded by. Um, the PSF to help develop it and has been doing work with, um, I can't think of the, 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 the people's name now, but he's been doing work um, in the UK on, on getting people involved in teaching. But I don't know of anyone doing it in South Africa. Thank you. Um, I noticed something quite interesting. <coughs> so you have your, I guess you could say, like your main file where yeah. you, where you mm -hmm. and uh, you you don't use classes, it's just purely functions. Yeah, it's um, it's, okay, so you can extend it out to be, you know, object orientated and, mm -hmm. and such if you want to. Um, you, you know, you could say wrap, you know, rather than just tacking properties onto the, the actor to, to, to the bird, you could make a class for the, the bird and have those okay. as properties and such. And then you just, but, um, the hooks, which Pygame Zero calls, are the update function and the draw function, and so you're still going to have to use those to call methods in your class. But that's, um, you know, but that's a sort of second. If you're doing it as 
well, if you're writing something complicated in it, that might be you know, how you choose to organize your code. I mean, the examples are intentionally simplistic. If you're teaching people, this would be sort of you know, a second step or something like that once they're like, familiar with the concepts. Um, I think I'm fairly sure that actually, I think there is an example in the. Um, Um, so in this example, they they go a lot more. They go more object orientated. You know, with the snake is there. It has various properties about it, um, and then it has a draw method, and the, and the draw then runs through the various classes and calls draw the appropriate method on all of them. So you can structure your code this way if you want to. Um, but Pygame Zero doesn't try and enforce that in any way because, it's, again, it's a lot more boilerplate you have to introduce people to. You want to, you want to minimize the amount of stuff you have to introduce before they can get something working and build from there. Is it possible to export your game to, a, to other platforms like Android? Okay, so Pygame Zero, is, well, Pygame is portable to a whole lot of platforms, and Pygame Zero inherits that. It is tested and released on Unix systems, Mac OS, and Windows, and um, it is specifically intended, and a lot of work has gone to make sure it runs very well on Raspberry Pis. So the um, default teaching set up is to put it on a Raspberry Pi and give that to a kid and say, have fun. So that's, but as I say, it is, um, um, it is ex tested for every release on the three major platforms. And as far as we know, it works on all of them. <laughs> oh. um, does that include mobile? Mm, I don't. Um, I don't know if it runs on sort of Android. Um, it is possible to get Pi Game to run on Android. At least it used to be. I just, um, I just don't follow that side of things um, uh, particularly closely. Any other questions? Cool. Thank mm. you so much for that talk. <laughs> okay.